What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Dear Mr. and Mrs. Bradley. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Dear Mr. and Mrs. Bradley. I hope you guys are enjoying the series. This is episode number five, guys. We are moving right along with this thing. Again, I hope you guys are enjoying it. If you are and you have not already, make sure you go ahead and click that subscribe button. Also, make sure you click the notification bell and smash that like button if you enjoy these types of videos. So, what you drinking on today? So, I'm drinking on what I'm normally drinking on 95% of the time. I'm drinking anything, which is um, a little bit of Hennessy. If you guys follow me on Instagram or you've been watching our vlogs, then you would know that I've been on a crazy wine kick. And so, today's wine of the day is called Purple Rain. So, this is supposed to be a local wine, but it's pretty good. Really good sweet red wine if it's in your stores. So, just wanted to let you guys know what we're sipping on today. All right. So... Uh, I got a question in our, um, if you guys aren't speaking of following, make sure you guys are following our family Instagram channel on Bradley Party of Six. So recently I got a DM that I was responding to where someone had mentioned the fact that they seen our most recent blog, vlog, vlog that we was recently got back out on the dating scene. We was out and we went out kicking it and they recently had a baby and they were asking how are things going as far as getting back on track with us as far as us goes and having a newborn how are things going <sighs> quiz is um is a little rough um i like to say that uh it's definitely the roughest of the three um as far as us goes i'm not going to respond too much but let's just say i've had some of my longest we've only been doing this a little while now uh, longest drops as far as bedroom goes with him um, with him around now. So let's, I guess we can break this up into um, different spaces. Um, it, first off, intimacy. If we talk about intimacy, I don't know if, and I didn't read this DM, so I don't know if um, they were more so talking about day night or sex or just quality time. Yeah, I mean, um, it did, it did was kind of yeah it was just kind of round in it just asking us how we, how are we getting back to us so i guess we can break it up into maybe those categories i would go with um as far as quality time and dates we have found um conventional and non-conventional ways to spend time together recently so um we've been we actually tasked my mom. We've been asking uh, my mom each Sunday if she could take the kids just for a few hours so we can, we'll either film videos like this. Um, we spend time together. We go work out at the gym. That's another thing that you'll see on Instagram. We're always at the gym working out and Sundays, um, those are the days that we really get our gym time in because we have someone to watch the kids. We, um, like this past Sunday, what did we do? We went to the gym and we filmed a little bit. And then we went out to get tacos. Get tacos. Right. Like, so we've been finding unconventional ways to spend time together. So maybe we can't go out at night on a date every week, but on Sundays we make that, that's how we get in our health and fitness on. And we also get in to spend quality time together. On Saturday nights, we try to, we know that if we keep him up to a certain time, that he'll sleep, he'll sleep pretty good through the night. So we'll hang out and tag team getting him to fall asleep and play a car game or something or some kind of board game to get him to fall asleep so that we and we and then within that time we hanging out with each other i think it's all about finding unconventional ways um, especially when your children are very small it's all about finding unconventional ways to to hang out together and to relate to each other so um getting back on our first date night was that weird did you feel like when we left Queese? That first night that we left Queens, because it had been a long, it, obviously we, our, this pregnancy was, I don't say rough, but this was our first time. He was a lot, he was our first baby that wasn't born on time. And then obviously we went, obviously we went longer and then it's our first boy. He just been a, a lot of firsts with this baby. So the first time you left him and you let him spend a night somewhere, how did you, 
Well, you, did you feel like you was able to focus on me as far as us go, or was your mind wondering? How was you? I'm always pretty comfortable when we leave our children, and I think this one was no different. I think it's just because we have, like, no one keeps our kids except for our parents. So I know that they're gonna be well taken care of and nothing's gonna happen to them in their presence. So I'm not, I'm never uncomfortable with leaving our kids. It was a bit sad when I was thinking about it throughout the day, I remember I was like, Oh my god we've been together i think he was like seven weeks old or something and i'm like we've been together for seven weeks straight now he's just gonna be ripped away from me but i was grateful for the help definitely grateful for the sleep uh that night because <laughs> that was before he was sleeping through the night so i was grateful for the sleep and it was it was needed time all right you still didn't answer the question you feel like he was able to focus on me i think so because like i said i was comfortable with him being gone because i know who he's with so um I, yeah, I, th I think we were able to focus. Obviously, we talked about him, but I feel like we do that even when we're like when we're in Mexico and we leave the kids and we're still talking about the girls. Well, you know, when we out the country, we're still talking about our kids, and they haven't been babies for a long time. So, I, I mean, I don't feel like we talked about him any more or any differently than we did the girls. Okay, so how about let me ask you this then. Do you feel comfortable as been obviously you were you were pregnant for nine months. Our sex life um, was up and down to to say the least through through having a baby, through you being pregnant. And then obviously that was a seven week time span in which we weren't having sex. So how comfortable did you feel like getting back to sex and things of that nature? I think the first time, this being my third baby. Um, I think the first time afterwards it's always a little scary and I don't know why because you're just like I don't even know why I just feel like it's always a little scary it's been so long and you're just like how's this gonna feel how am I gonna feel um, you know am I ready for this am I ready for this yet <clears throat> am I ready for this yet and this I think this time it was a little easier because I had a c-section this time, so nothing actually came out of there. So I, I think it was a bit easier this time, but it just, I think that first time is always kind of like a nervousness feeling, and I don't know why. Not here. I'm sure it wasn't. Not here. <laughs> I was ready to go, like let's, let's do this. What are we, yes, it's, it's been a long time. <laughs> what not long. Say what? What not long. Yep. <laughs> so what the heck, speaking of how, how about that how, question that then, how much how long did it feel long does it feel long postpartum no it doesn't feel long because there's so much going on between your body and your mind and trying to get yourself back together and gather yourself back up it doesn't feel long if i mean which i feel like that's a great a great point to, to start this conversation at um for what the difference between men and women go through when they're talking about sex after having a baby because it felt like a lifetime to me. <laughs> like between, like, okay, so for me, between the first two weeks, I, like, I didn't feel, and I still ain't like all the way right. He's 10 weeks now, and I still ain't all the way right. But that first two weeks, you know, I wasn't myself at all. I was trying to get everything back together. Mentally, I was, I was, I had just came off of um, like really still being sore and still being hurting from surgery. Right. So that first two weeks is like, I don't know, your mind is jumbled and everywhere. You're trying to remember how it felt to, to not have sleep again and all of that. Not to have that stomach poking out and the way you do sleep comfortably and yeah. yeah there's a lot of stuff going on that first two weeks and then i feel like after that it calmed down a little bit but obviously there's still a lot going on you're still trying to juggle life with this baby and then for us it, it was coming towards the summertime so we added another kid in the mix full time and it still didn't matter to me because even when them them um them granny depending things that you be wearing, I still was like, you got a nice ass. I cannot wait for this to be 
over. So, like I said, we were <laughs> just... after the first two, we were like coming into the summertime, so we were adding our fourth kid. So, Mari, we were adding him back into the mix full time because y'all know he's with us full time in the summer. And then on top of that, we decided that it was a good idea to sell our house and build a new one at that time. So it was like so much going on at that time. Um, like I feel like I honestly, like I wasn't thinking about sex besides the times that he kept bringing it up. I feel like the I six weeks flew. I didn't feel like I brought up sex that much when we was. I didn't say you brought it that much, but you brought it, but you sure brought it up. I, so I feel like the six. I feel like the six weeks flew with everything that we had going on. I don't. Think I feel like these last ten weeks have flown. I mean, and I feel the like complete opposite. Like I feel like there are there are concessions and there's times that I be like that. Within that first six weeks, I was like, because the thing is, six weeks for you, that's, that six weeks point start at when um, the baby is born. For the man, it's like, all right, well, I got, I got six weeks before I can even touch her again. But in actuality, like I said something to you probably last September when we found out we was having him, and I was like, well, shit, I got to wait a year before we get back here. And that's literally, at that point, I had already started thinking like it's gonna be a, a basically a, really a year before I get my wife back. Like a year or longer before I get my wife back. And that's exactly what a man, and most men, if I'm speaking for most men, probably is, is thinking is it's like, it's dope, I'm acquiring, I, I got queets, I got my journey, I love him to death, that dude drive me crazy sometimes, but I love him to death. But I lost, I'm lo- I lose my wife for a year because it's like, like I said, and we, you wanna be, emotionally there so you don't want to seem um un what's the word I'm work, looking for um not sympathetic unsympathetic you don't want to be unsympathetic you understand like oh she just had this baby or oh she's pregnant oh she been on up all night with him oh she had a rough day with him last thing she's thinking about and I know the last thing she's thinking about is sex but I don't mean that ain't and I'm not thinking about sex <laughs> I mean I'm still like uh, well, I think I, there's a lot of people I, who I talk to where that after the baby point is really rough. And there's a lot of people who break up because of that, because they're not understanding each other or or talking through things. Like, there's a lot of women who go through postpartum symptoms, but have no idea what it is or no idea how it feels, or no idea that they're going through it. And they can't communicate that and they're not communicating. Then the guy's frustrated because he's like, OK, you should be good now the baby's 12 <laughs> weeks old you should be good right. and and that's not the case in a lot of in a lot of situations and so no one's understanding each other no one's talking about things and and i i feel like that's where i mean that could really break a relationship i feel like sex i feel like men look at sex com- well not think men look at sex completely different from women whereas i could have a rough day i could have a bad day and I could come home and be like, all right, let's let's get this on the popping. Where the women, I've I've learned over the years that women emotionally are vagina, heart, and brain are all in line. When men, where men, penis is is it's one single function. We that that shit operates completely on its own. Whereas, like I said, if if a woman had a rough day, Don't she me. <laughs> she had a rough day. She's not feeling loved, or she had the, the, the kid was driving her crazy day. The box ain't gonna be, it's, it's probably close tonight. Whereas, men, like I said, it could be, I got, I've had some really rough days in the office, and I come home and I'm like, all right, what's up? Let's let's go. And I and that disconnect after a baby is, is huge. And it's, I've, I, I find myself now at times being like, um, tr- making sure that I am sympathetic to the fact that. Not saying things like, "Well, you've been home all day," or "You ain't had, you just what you've been doing all day," I'm or in your face. <laughs> "What you've been doing all day? Why can't you?" I just be like, "All right, you know what? Queen's had a rough night, or whatever, whatever." More likely, I already wake up with the mindset of knowing that it's probably not gonna happen. I think it's a, I think definitely think sex is a mindset thing, and I think it need to be on the other end too. I think women need to make it concentrated effort or focus on all right i'm gonna try to do something unless obviously we know things got to be kind of going out in the right order for it to happen but like hey i want to concentrate on my husband today, if possible i agree 
I definitely agree with that. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap up this video. Hope you guys have been really enjoying this series because we have been enjoying filming it. Keep those questions, keep those DMs coming. We're going to keep on trying to answer them as we can, all right? And if you haven't already, again, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to our channel and also follow us on Instagram. All right. Until the next time, it's Mr. and Mrs. Bradley checking out. Peace.